Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Sokol from RB Electricity, and thank you for joining me today. Uh, this is part two in my uh, RV Electricity Basics class, the one that I was going to be teaching at the FMCA rally last week, but sadly um, that was canceled. Uh, but I'm here for you now. Uh, you probably know me from rvtravel.com where I've written hundreds and hundreds of articles, my No Shock Zone blog where I've done thousands and thousands of answers on all kinds of things electrical. Uh, but this is my own thing, so please subscribe to my RV Electricity Facebook group, uh, this channel, uh, newsletter, all kinds of other things. Uh, all my things will still be published on RV Travel, but I'm trying to catalog everything over in RV Electricity. Um, and let's see if we will save uh, all the questions till the end. I'll try to get to those. But right now I'm going to try not to be distracted by the questions. Um, let's see. Somebody said, does anyone know? Let's see. Does anyone know if this event is 1 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Central time? Eastern time, Kathy, because I'm in lovely Funkstown, Maryland, um, and we're over in Eastern time. But yes, um, you can watch it later. No problem. Easy peasy. Um, so let's go ahead and jump on in. Do, 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 do. Okay, so part two is on pedestals surge protectors, and RV fire prevention. Um, so we'll get rolling through that here in just a minute. Uh, but what I want to do is make sure I thank my sponsors. Uh, I actually have uh, some, some really, really powerful sponsors for this. I think it's fabulous. Um, um, I have Southwire and Surge Guard. Um, they make all the RV power protection products, as well as a lot of the meters now that um, I'm using in my seminars. I think they make a really great product. Um, both for their surge protection and for their, um, their, their meters and tools. Uh, I have a bunch of it. I have every kind of meter on the planet, I think. Um, and still some of the little south wire stuff is just my favorite for quickies. Um, I also have uh, some products from SnapPad and they're a sponsor. We'll be talking that, about that in level three, in session three. Uh, car Generator, um, their logo is just a little dark. Uh, I'll show that in the third session. Smart Plug, I think I'm showing in this session. Uh, they have a better technology for the twist locks, um, inlets on your RV. Protang makes uh, the Thea fire protection systems, which is really, really interesting that I've seen uh, work in, uh, right in front of me. Pretty amazing. Uh, Techno RV is a great site, to, to you can, a retail site that uh, you can purchase surge guard products and a bunch of other things. Um, and Micro Air makes an easy start. Um, we're only going to be discussing some of these things a little bit today, but as I proceed down through here, I'm going to be breaking every single one of these slides up into their own presentation. I mean, there's really 30 or 40 different presentations I could do out of just the basic content that I've done here. But no worries, we're going to get right into this. Okay, so let's see. Greetings from Windy Eastern Colorado. H how's everybody doing out there? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, high atop Funkstown Hill here. Uh, everybody leaves me alone pretty much. Um, but, um, uh, you know, we're staying safe. I hope you're staying safe. Um, you know, if anything that I can do in terms of articles or videos that I can do for you, just you know, leave it in the comments section. Um, and I will be, uh, I didn't do it yet today, but I will set links up to any of the sponsors uh, gear, any of the gear that I've used here so that you guys can find it if want, want it to use it, get it. Okay, so what is a pedestal? Well, a uh, pedestal is really this temporary shore power connection, uh, typically in a campground, uh, but you can in fact install them at your house. I've got one here installed on the side of my uh, one work shed. Um, they come in a variety of flavors. You can get a 30 amp one or a 20 and 30 amp. Uh, I much prefer the 20, 30, 50 amp versions, uh, three different places to plug in and all will supply basic power to your RV. Of course, as you get more, you know, bigger amperage, you have more things that you can run at the same time. Uh, one thing I want to note is what you, what you really want to do, you have to train yourself to turn the breakers off before you plug in and turn them on. And then when you're done, you want to turn them off again. Uh, so what you want to try to avoid doing is just plugging and unplugging under power. Because if you do that, what you do is you start wearing out uh, the little guys right here. 
uh, you'll start arcing. There's little arcs and sparks that you see are not electrons. That's bits of your copper and brass just burning up and going away. Um, and eventually it will destroy the, the, the contacts in your plug. Um, sadly, you can't control all the other hundreds of people that have plugged into the pedestal before you. So if you see a loose plug, a loose receptacle that you might plug into, you want to really see if the campground will change that out for you. Uh, do not do this yourself. You want to see if they have someone that can do it, and especially if they do it, you want to check it for yourself. Uh, plugging or unplugging under load will damage um, cause arc damage if you have to do it. I, I know a number of campgrounds don't have disconnects, which is actually a code violation now. Um, you would turn off the circuit breaker inside of your RV, power it up, you know, pl plug it in, and then power it back up. Circuit breakers are really meant to turn on and off. Um, and it's still safest not to have your air conditioner ready to run. So anything under load creates an arc. It's just, just unavoidable. Again, and we covered this in the last session, but it always bears repeating. <clears throat> a 20 amp outlet can provide about 2,400 watts of power. That's because <coughs> 20 amps times 120 volts is equal to 2,400 watts. See what we did there? All you have to do is multiply the amperage times the voltage, and there's your watts. Um, 30 amp outlet can support, provide up to 3,600 watts. Even though it's that great big thing you think is a lot more power, it's really only 50% more power than the, the 20. It is not a 240 volt outlet, even though it looks like it. It is not, it's a, definitely 120. Uh, a 50 amp outlet can provide 12,000 watts, and that's because there's two legs of power. It's just not a single so, source. It's, it's 50 amps per leg times 120 volts is equal 6,000 watts per leg. Um, and so that equals, add those together, it equals 12,000 watts. So you actually have a hundred amperes of power. I think they really should have called it a hundred amp pedestal. Some people yell at me for that, but the fact of the matter is it really is a hundred amperes of 120 volt power, but you can only get 50 out of each side. That's, that's basically it. And if we look inside of a pedestal, these are, these are how these things are wired. You really have a, a ground and a neutral and um, uh, two hot legs coming in. Uh, and realistically, what you want to do is the, the ground, the green ground wire coming in needs to be bonded to the metal chassis of the pedestal. Uh, on occasion, I've seen them where that connection has been lost and the entire pedestal body has been energized with 120 volts. So that can be dangerous. This is why it's always good to test the pedestal, pedestal surface first. The neutral has to be remained has to remain unbonded to the ground at the pedestal. That's just part of code. Uh, I will go into an extended class later on why that it's necessary to do that, why that's a good idea. Um, and you can see in the middle here, you, your 30 amp outlet is basically, you know, it is a um, uh, one hot and uh, one neutral. Uh, and then what you end up with is your 50 amp outlet. It's both hots. Uh, you have to be careful some campgrounds would kind of short circuit a single wire coming in and put it on both sides of the 50 amp outlet. Uh, we'll go into that shortly. And if they do that, your amperage can actually not only burn up your plug, it can burn up the wiring inside of your, um, your, your um, transfer switch and cause a fire. So we want to be really careful with that. So let's go do let's go measure a pedestal a little bit again Southwire basic meter kits you can get this kit for less than $40 um, I think they have them at Lowe's uh, you can go to Amazon if you like um, Klein makes a good a nice kit that uh, that I also use uh, Southwire just happens to be my favorite um, so th that includes a digital multimeter a three light tester and a non-contact voltage tester so let's again let's review this um, Edison plug has three connections. There is a neutral, a hot, and a ground. Neutral would be the taller slot on the right. Hot would be the shorter slot on the left, and ground would typically be at the top. And this again is how they're laid out. And you can see that the ground at, should be at the top, and the neutral once should be at the right side. If they've reversed the polarity in it and sometimes got the hot and neutral swapped, that does not automatically create a hot skin condition. It can if your RV is also miswired, 
But what it does tell you when we're, when we're, we're checking the polarity on these things, if somebody's miswired that much of it, that means who knows what else is miswired in there. So I, it's a good sign that something is wrong. And if some service tech was, would go inside of your RV and, and try to work on the wiring while they thought the, um, the neutral was at zero volts, uh, they could be injured. So you want to be careful with that. 240 volt outlets. Uh, again, they're set with the ground at the top. And the reason why you do that is so that your, um, your power plug, your shore power will hang straight down. I've seen a number of them where they mount them sideways, upside down. Those are all code violations. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I've tried to convince a number of the campground um, organizations to let me create a class for their, um, their maintenance guys. Maybe they will now. I don't know. But uh, ask them if they would. I'm, I'm glad to do it. Uh, you know that I'm an actual professor, right? Um, I mean, an adjunct professor at Shenandoah Conservatory, and I've been teaching seminars for decades. Um, so I'm, I'm, I actually have the credentials to do this, I guess. But I'm glad to help. I'm, I, seriously, I'm glad to help. You can see a, a 240 volt outlet. The RVs generally don't really use 240 volts of actual potential inside of them. We, we split them up, and it really becomes two separate 120 volt services, much as uh, 240 volts comes into our house and we split it down the middle with a neutral. Uh, and then what that does is gives us 120 on most of the appliances and things in our house. Although we can tap off and use 240 volts typically in our home for stoves and big air conditioners and, and things like that. But in RVs, unless you have a large coach, the vast, vast majority of RVs just use uh, both legs as 120 volts each. So let's go ahead. Let me see if I'm jumping ahead here too much. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let me show you a little bit of measuring here again. So let's pop over to that site so we can kind of see what's going on. Da, 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 there we go. So um, once again, just in a quick review. Here I'm just setting this to the... 600 volt AC scale, making sure it's not on hold. Uh, you will find that it's almost impossible to stick probes in these 120 volt ones because they generally have a little shutter that needs to be flipped open. They, they kid proof them. Um, and what we should expect to see from here to here should be around uh, 120 volts. Um, Let's see. Well, I guess if I turned it, oh, we're turned on. There we are, powered up. Now let's talk a little bit about voltage. On the low side, much below 105 volts is considered to be dangerous. Um, to things like your air conditioner and some of your charging systems, and probably your refrigerator, if you have a residential refrigerator, nothing like that's happy below 105. Uh, same way on the other side, once you get up above, um, you know, 130 volts or so, it gets to be dangerous as well. Um, you know, I can make this do all kinds of crazy things here. So I've got a big transformer on it. So we want to really check that. Uh, you also, a, a really good thing to do is use a basic three light tester. Um, you can do it in, in, in your 20 amp. Um, here's the way I showed you the other day that you can do this in your um, 30 amp. You just take a little 30 amp hockey puck here, plug that in. You're looking for two uh, amber lights and no red light. And somebody had asked me the other day, or I guess at the last show here, uh, to come up with a, a, a demonstration on what they all mean. I actually know what they all mean, but we're not going to go into that today. But I think that that would be um, a decent test. Another thing you can do is, and I'll show you this later, is one of these little $8 testers can actually plug in there. Isn't that cool? I have an extended video on this I just did the other day that uh, is actually a pretty decent test. Uh, 240 volts side of this, uh, what you want to be measuring is basically from, you can see neutrals on the bottom and neutral over to the one hot leg should measure 120-ish. Again, no lower than 105, no higher than 128, 130. Neutral to the other side should again measure somewhere around 120-ish. Yeah, there we go. Come on, get in there. I'm trying to hold it so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, it's important that ground 
and neutral measure close to zero, but there's nothing wrong with them measuring two or three or five volts. In fact, they probably should measure something, some kind of volts. I'm going to do an extended class on that. It's really, really interesting how that works. Um, but yeah, two or three volts between your ground and the neutral has nothing to do with ghost voltages or leakage voltage currents or anything like that. There's a real, real straightforward uh, voltage drop reason for that, which we'll get into later, but not in this class. And again, what you want to make sure, be absolutely sure that you do not measure zero volts from the hot leg to the hot leg. I don't know of any tester right now that you can plug in that will test this, sadly. Um, I've ordered a cable that allows me to interconnect. It just breaks this off the 50 amp into a pair of Y connections for individual testing. Or you just plug in, you know, one of these guys right here, and that'll tell you all kinds of stuff. Uh, surge guard, we'll talk about that in, um, in, in just a minute. How's that, guys? Shore power connections, um, a, a couple of interesting things, and I didn't realize that people didn't do this. Don't leave your shore power cord set out on the rain. Corrosion leads to resist, increased resistance and overheating. Make sure your twist lock plug is twisted in. I didn't realize that people didn't know that you push them in and then you have to click them. And if you don't click them in, they don't make full contact. And you also have to then thread on the ring to actually cinch it down, because if you don't, it'll just torque that thing right out of there. Um, I've used twist lock connections in the pro audio business for decades. Um, RVs, sometimes you're not taught to do that, but when you push it in, it needs to go click. It has about an eighth of an inch turn on it uh, to connect. If you don't and it's hanging there drooping, this is when these things start to burn up and they can lose uh, connections and all kinds of bad things can happen. Um, here's one of, whoops, I gotta, I gotta well, let, me move, let me move my face off of here for a second. Uh, there's my face, I got rid of it, good. Um, so the smart plug option, I think is really, really interesting. This is what happens when these melt down and they look like this. Uh, smart plug is a really, really interesting technology. In fact, I approached them uh, years, a couple years ago and said, please send me some of your stuff. Um, let's see, someone, oh. uh, and, and this stuff has like 20 times the contact area of these little twist lock plugs and it's marine grade. I think they're really, really vastly superior uh, to regular twist locks. Um, let me get back to, here we go. So this guy, uh, if, you, if you see him, this would be the side that would mount in your RV, like so. And you can see there's no twisty, locky things involved. When you push it in there, it does clanks in and then you can snap that down. I think you could tow your RV with this thing. Now, I don't recommend it. Don't go towing your RV with it. But the beauty of it, there's no twisties. This thing has got all marine grade components in it. Um, 20 times the surface area, costs a few bucks more, but by golly, um, you know, I had one guy uh, said that he'd burned up three of the twist locks in one season. I don't know what he was doing wrong. Um, if they're properly maintained, a regular 30 amp twist lock should be okay, but people tend to overdrive these things a lot once you're in a 30. Okay, let's talk about surge protectors now. Um, surge protectors, you probably are familiar with a surge strip that you may have for your computer at home. Uh, they come in all sizes and flavors. Uh, surge strip really doesn't, is not big enough to protect your RV. Um, so companies make much larger versions of this that either will plug in the post or can be mounted inside of your RV. Uh, so uh, I actually wrote an article a couple years ago. If you go on rvtravel.com, you can look up surges and jewels and mobs, oh my, which is an extended article on how they work. So let's talk a little bit about what this voltage surge is. I don't like the word surge a whole lot um, from an electrical engineering standpoint. Um, basically a surge is defined as a short duration over voltage event. It's really a spike, more or less a little spike. I'll show you a picture in a second. And they can be anywhere from a couple hundred to 2000 volts or more. Uh, they can last 
as few as a few milliseconds. Uh, if you have a lightning event, lightning hits the ground near you or up to a second or more for high voltage line faults when the lines are actually transferring over from lost power. So you can see this little spike, what this baby looks like. Um, there down in the bottom, we, we're, we're moving along here at our happy little 120 volts, and all of a sudden there's this spike. So the things that they call a, a, a MOV device actually clamps that and stops it at maybe 300 volts or so. Um, another thing that these will not stop is over voltage from miswired outlets. Uh, interesting thing, the, the TT30 shore power outlet that looks very similar to a uh, dryer outlet is not a dryer outlet that's wired for 230 volts. It's, it's, it's has to be 120 volts. Um, and if you have a 50 amp, um, 120 volt, 240 volt RV outlet that's properly wired and it loses a neutral, um, that neutral is what divides 240 volts up into 120 and 120 equally. So when that happens, your voltage can widely change to, you know, 180 volts on one side and 40 volts on 50 volts on the other. Oh, bad things happen. You don't want to go there. The MOV is basically this mineral oxide varistor. Its job is to just kind of burn up a little bit every time it's hit with something, and they're, they're um, actually rated in joules of power. Again, a more I'll do a more complex article later on what they are and how they work. Um, but they are sacrificial. So after they got hit with enough times, they will actually die, and the little light will go out on your surge protector telling you that um, it's no longer MOV protected. So think of them as just giving up a little bit of their life every time it's hit. They should last for years, a decade or more, unless you are in high voltage spike events. Um, and the mobs need to be replaced or the whole unit needs to be replaced or whatever once they die. Um, typical types of surge protectors, the two types you can really break them down to are the basic protection on the right or the, the total protection on the left. Um, total protection um, systems are, are made by um, uh, surge guard. Uh, also, you will see EMS from Progressive, basically the same sort of thing. EMS is just electrical management system. Uh, but the bigger ones that are big fat like that uh, have relays built into them that can actually monitor the voltage and disconnect you. The basic protection units are much smaller than that, and they're basically just a fancy surge strip. Um, they're not bad uh, for lightning spikes, but they will do nothing to protect protect or disconnect you from high or low voltage. It just can't. Um, so basically, do you need this total electrical protection or, or do you need the basic stuff? Um, again, a basic surge protector could defend you against these short duration spikes. However, it cannot disconnect you from an over under voltage. And one of these uh, TEP, total electrical protection units, uh, can monitor and disconnect you from dangerous voltages and surges. Now, the key here is basic surge protectors cost less than 100 bucks. Total electric protection devices cost three to $400. Some people freak out and say, that's a lot of money. You don't know one, you don't wanna know what it's gonna cost to fix something in your RV. So the basic ones, um, they're smaller because all they, they, they only have um, mobs in them. And some, usually many of them will have like an indicator light to show you that you've got, you don't have reverse polarity or an open ground. So that part is okay. That part's good. Uh, the, the, the TEP units, the total electrical protection units, um, they offer all kinds of other stuff in them. And they will like shut down power in the middle of the night or you know if everybody has their air conditioners on and somebody complained well those dumb things shut me down i'm going they're saving your air conditioner from killing itself because everybody else in the park is running their air conditioner at the same time um so they do cost more but um here's the thing 400 bucks seems like a lot of pay a lot to pay but it's not just the electrical problem and it's not just the service you know, insurance deductibles are 500 bucks or more. So right there, that would pay for it. However, I have seen RVs that have been down for weeks, months. I just went and did a um, uh, uh, one that had been down for nearly a year. They actually, at my, uh, at my, at the customer's insistence, dragged this thing, put, trailered it up from down in uh, Carolinas up to me in uh, above, up above Hagerstown so that I would look at this thing. 
Um, I figured it out in a, in a couple of hours, but the fact of the matter is they had at, at multiple sites, nobody could figure out what was going on with this thing. This thing was nearly a year where they didn't have it, that they would be paying, paying on it. So um, I think electrical is like dangerous. It's obvious if a wheel bearing goes out, it's not so obvious when you have an electrical problem. Um, so now I will note um, on these units, let's just talk about one second here. I don't have a, uh, I'm missing a cord. That I, now I always need more gadgets, right? I'm missing a connection that will let me do this. Um, where am I? There we are. But here is a, a surge guard, uh, a thir thir three, yeah, 349.51. Um, this is my favorite unit for 50 amp stuff. Uh, when I do one of my dedicated shows on this, I'm going to put voltage on it and show how it detects and sends stuff back and forth to you. Um, it also has the ability uh, to run one of these little remote controls inside of your house or inside of your RV. So, and it'll show you if the voltage is going up or down. You can look at voltage and amperage and everything. And I know that at some point they have a Bluetooth connection um, coming out that you could run on your phone, which I think is really, really handy. So stay tuned for um, my big boy version of that. Um, of course, they make a, um, a 30 amp version as well. Ugh, too much stuff here. A 30 amp version of that, as so well you can see, it's much smaller. Um, and here, and these guys, I don't know if anybody from Surge Guard is watching. You know I tear all your stuff apart, right? And I. I try to blow stuff up. So this is, <laughs> this is what, it, whoops, there we go. Yeah, this is what one looks like on the inside. And you can see the, uh, the little mob devices inside of them, a little circuit board. I basically take everything apart and then I try to blow it up because that's what I would do for the sound business. Some fun, huh? Yeah, baby. Um, so yeah, uh, in, a, in, a, in a week or so, I will do an advanced class that goes through all of the bits and pieces of it. I just need a few more cables so I can fit all of this stuff on my desk. Good heavens. Okay, so let's roll back. Here we go. Uh, another thing to really consider um, is fire suppression. Um, and I saw these guys, uh, I think in uh, Goshen, Indiana here a year or so ago. It's a company called Protang. And they make a product called Thea uh, uh, as a fire protection system. So basically suppression system. So what it does, um, it actually has Freon in the tube. It's under low pressure, almost no pressure normally. Uh, but when it gets a high enough temperature, uh, then you get into, um, it, it bursts and spreads out a bunch of um, uh, Freon, a special Freon, and just smothers the fire. Okay, and, and I think this stuff's terribly important. Um, many RV fires start in the um, refrigerator section, uh, and so you can protect that. If, uh, if that overheats, this can go off. Uh, you can put it in your battery section, because um, I've had um, battery chargers overheat. We've even talked about perhaps mounting uh, small tubes of this that would be in automatic transfer switches um, and engine compartments. So I think this would be really, really useful for a lot of um, protection. The only thing more dangerous than an electrical breakdown is having a fire in your RV. I've seen a few of them up close and personal. It's pretty awesome and awesomely bad. I mean, it just is. Okay. I'm going to break out of the main section here, and then we're going to take a few questions. Again, uh, Facebook groups, RV Electricity uh, is my stuff. Um, I've just been changing over my YouTube to youtube.com slash RV Electricity slash C slash RV Electricity, which you'll be able to jump on there soon. Mike at RVElectricity.com. I'm setting up a new email address. Uh, RV Electricity Newsletter, so um, yeah, you can jump on that, uh, subscribe to that on rvtravel.com or rvelectricity.com. And you can also get my No Shock Zone uh, RV Electricity uh, book uh, on Amazon, which has got a lot of this stuff in it, plus more in diff different details. So if you are a book reader, so much the better. 
Um, and I would like to go ahead and thank my sponsors for all of this, Southwire, SnapPad, Car Generator, Smart Plug, Protein, Techno RV, and Micro Air. I will put links to their various sites here later once I get all the rest of this kind of stuff done. But let's go ahead and we'll answer some questions for a few minutes. Uh, let's see, where am I? Da, 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 da. There I am. I just need more buttons. I don't have nearly enough buttons. So somebody was asking solutions. Okay. Can you have a surge protector at the pedestal and one built into the RV? Can that work okay? I think that is actually a really good way to do this. Um, you can double up on them so that what, I, what I've tended to do is put the inexpensive one out on the pedestal just the surge only unit. And that takes the brunt of like a lightning hit or whatever first. Uh, and then you can build one into the RV, keep the expensive one in there inside of the RV. And they work, they do not interfere with each other at all. And in fact, you can get some of the advanced um, automatic transfer generator transfer switches from, um, from Southguard. Um, some, excuse me, from Southwire, too many, guard, too many words, from Southwire, that does in fact include um, over voltage, you know, total electrical protection as part of, of the actual uh, automatic transfer switch at all. Uh, and then let's see, somebody also had asked a question. Let's see here. I think they said uh, hardwired and portable surge protector. Yes. So that is exactly right. That is the best solution. Not that expensive. I think it's really good. Um, save the mobs for your main thing. Uh, and this is a really great question. Do you need a 30 amp and 50 amp surge guard in case you only get a 30 amp hookup at a campground? Um, and the answer to that is no, you do not. Uh, the basically, what you want to do is pick the surge protector that matches your RV cord set. So if you have a 50 amp RV, get a 50 amp surge protector. Uh, a total electrical protection system is, is be the best. And then dog bone it to be, to plug into a 30 or even to a 20. Uh, and always use this at home too, because um, I've seen home system po power go crazy at times. My dad had this happen at his rental house uh, a few months ago and it took out uh, the electronics and the furnace twice before the service technician the and the, 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 the guy found out, he said, I don't know why these keep burning up. And um, I went and looked at them. I'm measuring 160 volts <laughs> on the one side. I went, oh, and that's why the lights are blinking really bright. Uh, let's see, what else? Do we have any other questions? Uh, do you need to go from 50 amp to use? Okay, to go from 50 amp surge protection to use on a 30 amp pedestal. Yes, exactly right. That's perfectly fine. Any other questions here? Okay, if you are on a 30 amp and a 50 amp cord, how do you switch from rig to leg to leg? Leg to leg. Uh, okay, 30 amp on a 50 amp, it just picks one of the hot legs to run. Um, you are not putting 240 volts into your, um, into your unit, and you likely don't need it. On occasion, you might uh, if you've got a larger RV, but little ones don't. Uh, standard, standard ones don't. And uh, Okay, so here's another question. If a campground lists 50 amp power, will the pedestal always have 30 amp available? Everyone that I've ever seen does. Sometimes they don't have 20s. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, I know best practices would be if they list 50 amp power, they should also have a 30. I've seen a number of people, and even though this is not really code compliant, but everybody does it, and I think it's reasonably safe, um, they'll take a 50 amp to 30 amp adapter. So the 50 amp will plug into the pedestal, it'll convert it to 30, and then you plug your 30 amp shore power cable in. Uh, what you don't want to do is then split that on the other side and try to drive multiple devices off of that um, because then what you're relying on is the 30 amp circuit breaker inside of your camper to protect that run of 30 amps. Circuit breakers are there, not there to protect your camper. Circuit breakers are there to protect the wiring 
right after them. So that's what you want to make sure you don't do. And in any case, you want, you know, if you feel something hot or smoking, you want to shut the thing off. Uh, let's see. Here's one. How can you not have the cord out during a rainstorm? You can have the cord out, cord out during the rainstorm. What you don't want to do is leave the open ends laying out on the rainstorm. Um, so, you know, what I'm saying is don't leave your, your you know, don't unplug your RV, for, you know, for, for your twist lock and leave it laying out. The rubber is rated, it's oil rated, it's rated for water, it's rated for snow, it's rated for UV. Uh, it'll be absolutely fine. Where you get into trouble is that end. So if that end itself doesn't have a, um, a cover on it, uh, that can co corrode the brass. I will be doing a, a maintenance class on these connections um, and, um, and showing how to use deoxid and a variety of other things here for cleaning. There's one or two more questions here. Uh, okay, so let's see something about here. Um, most big rigs are wide one leg on one side and the other leg on the other side. So at 30 amp, can you change legs that are getting powered? Um, well, okay. So, but most big rigs are wired one leg on one side of the rig and the other leg on the other side. So, so basically what happens when you plug in a 30 amp um, adapter, and let me see if I've got one here. Do I have one here? I do have one here. So we look at this guy. Um, this is the 30 amp side that we would plug into the pedestal, right? And this is the 50 amp side. So what they do is they connect this hot here, which I'm looking at the right one. Yeah, this hot here actually connects to both sides, to both sides of this guy right here. Um, and you only, so it, 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 you don't have to like change over to one side or the other. There may be a few junk import ones that are not like that, but I have never encountered one. But what you want to do is make sure, you know, Camco makes really a, uh, the, the best units out there that I have seen. There's probably some other stuff, but they're just the stuff that I'm most familiar with. So this takes your one, your one leg and it splits up the power available to both of those legs. So you don't have to be switching anything else. So I think I'm going to take one more question here. And then, then if you have questions, please, um, is it, if, okay, NAC requires 530 amps, it is 50, press. okay, I'm going to skip the, the, skip the uh, code questions here. Uh, okay, so somebody's asking, whoops, I've got so many questions, look, they're all over the place. Uh, da, 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 let me kill that. Can the 20 and 30 amp outlet on a pedestal be used at the same time, say for powering the microwave totally separately? Okay, so here's the deal. Those little Y cables that you can get that'll take the Y, you know, the 20 and the 30 and kind of run them into a 50, and they say it creates a 50, they will not work on a properly wired pedestal that has a, um, a, um, a GFCI on it, because it'll just trip the GFCI immediately because you're intermingling the, uh, the neutrals. I have seen a few people do this, and I still have to look this up and see if it's really code compliant, although I don't think it's dangerous. They have basically run a, a separate extension cord that's completely isolated from everything from that 20 amp on the pedestal into the, say, uh, the outlet that's your microwave outlet. So that's on its own world. That would work. That should not be dangerous. I've got to go look up and see what code says about this before I can really recommend it. But I know a lot of people have done it. Um, and it is a good way to get 50 amperes out of a pedestal if the pedestal will supply it. Uh, some of them, if you have a 30 and 50 by itself, um, they don't have a separate leg in it. And they only have 30 amps going to that whole pedestal. So if it has a 20 and a 30 on it, that probably won't work. If it's got a 50 and a 30 and a 20 amp receptacle on it, then it may work as long as you can maintain complete isolation on that 20 amp connection, but it will never work otherwise. It just won't. Okay, I'm gonna shut down here because I got another class to do in 20 minutes. So thank you very much. Once again, I'm Mike Sokol from RV Electricity, and I will see you uh, at the top of the hour again. Thanks for watching.